I need you guys to watch this before you write any other proposal. That's how good it is. I spent 32 years as an Air Force contracting officer. I want to debunk a couple of myths right off the bat. I, I think if you have only one takeaway, and I don't know how to emphasize that more, I'll, I'll probably repeat it a, a dozen times, but it's just because that is the number one thing. One of the most profitable skill sets that you can develop is learning how to write a government contracting proposal, meaning a proposal that could win a government contract. It could be profitable for you if you have a business because it can win high revenue government contracts for your business, but it can also be profitable for you as a consultant or an advisor because companies will pay top dollar for somebody that knows how to write proposals. There are very few people that have a understanding of what a contracting officer in the government is actually looking for in a proposal. And in this episode, I'm about to show you, or I should say share with you, a, a clip from our certification program. We have master government contracting officer, retired Colonel Louis Orndorff. He spent over 30 years as a contracting officer. I guarantee you that you're going to hear tips in this video that you have never heard before for writing a proposal for the government. So here is Louis. So Rick asked me to step in today and talk to you guys. Each one of you are probably focused on, you have to generate a proposal. And there's a lot of factors that go into this. And I want to talk to you about it from a contracting officer's uh, perspective. I want to debunk a couple of myths right off the bat. Wind themes mean absolutely nothing to the government. They're not catching them. It doesn't matter if you put them in their face. It doesn't uh, really do anything to ultimately influence it. It helps with the readability. That's really on your side. That kind of helps you focus. That, so there's some goodness to it. But once you throw it over the fence to the government, your wind themes really, I, I don't think I ever once said, oh, here's a proposal. This is the clear wind theme for this company. And it, it, it has influenced me. So there's number one. Number two, if you're developing a proposal, there's a whole bunch of conversation about, well, I want the government to think this. And let's put it in the executive summary, and then we'll shape the thinking. It, it really doesn't. Most of the sub-teams and the proposal evaluation don't read the executive summary. They only read their section. And when they talk about everything needs to be standalone, it needs to be standalone. What we would often do is, let me use uh, the graphic of old school, when you had to provide the binder, and the binder was tabbed out in five different sections, what I would do as old school, I remember one of my first jobs as a lieutenant, was I had to rip apart all those binders and take, make new binders so that the technical team for evaluation factor number one had each one of the sections from each one of the binders for, for evaluation factor number one. They didn't see anything else. They didn't see the executive summary. They didn't see the rest of the documentation that was provided. They didn't see the CPARs, they didn't see past performance, they didn't see anything. They only saw that one section that we ripped out. So a lot of times a contracting officer, the team, the evaluation team will say, look, you've got 10 proposals, your job, and Fred, I'm gonna pick on you just cause you're at the top right corner of my screen. Your job, Fred, is to give me a coordinated evaluation of those 10 for section one whatever that might be, or evaluation criteria, technical 1.1. And I don't care what else you do. I don't need you to do anything else. So if you're Fred and you say, oh, I've got 10 rocks to crush, I don't really care about anything else. I'm just going to do the piece in front of me because it becomes overwhelming. And oh, by the way, I've got a deadline. And oh, by the way, they're not letting me out of the building or they're not letting me do anything else until I get this done. So you're not going to take any time to go and cross, cross look into anything else. So as you're writing proposals, you really want to do a couple of key things for the government. And this is what I thought was brilliant. You basically have to assume that everybody's writing, reading a ton and they have the attention span of, of a gnat. So I always talk, you, you've heard the word, the bottom line up front, bluff. If you really want to like really get impactful proposals, what I loved and I can't speak to, there's no rule about this, but what I really liked was for each section, if there was one synopsis summary right up front, it said, hey, we're going to do this and this. 
we're going to we're going to crush it because of this and this all the details follow so at this point you've already convinced me of what what you want me to take away and then everything else just reinforces that and gives me some material to to make my comments that hey they this is how they're going to approach it there were times when i would lift and co- lift copy and paste narrative right out of a proposal because it was perfect. It was exactly what I needed as an evaluator. But the key on this one is, if you make me search, if you're going to say, no, you got to read everything. So I want you to really understand you have a risk of losing your audience. I don't know if you guys got the same takeaway that I did from all of this, but let's just re say what Colonel Orndorff went through. First of all, Everybody reviewing your proposal doesn't read the entire proposal. In fact, different people will score different sections. And those people that are scoring sections, they probably don't read your executive summary. They probably don't read the introduction. They're probably not looking at your your past performance and your use cases. Maybe you slid another section in there talking about like the different companies you've ever, but all they're doing is scoring the specific piece of that proposal that was assigned to them by the contracting officer. So that's one thing. So if you spend a lot of time writing like summaries and, you know, um, a bluff at the beginning of the proposal and a summary at the end, or maybe you have the past performance section use cases, all that stuff is going unseen by the actual people that are scoring your proposal. And in some cases, in the cases that Colonel Orndorff's talking about, And the other piece that I thought was really interesting here is he says right up front, you want to tell them that you meet the requirement right up front and then prove it. That's the first thing that you're saying for each, not just at the beginning of the proposal at the end, for each section, for each requirement. Very powerful. And Colonel Orndorff goes on to cover a lot of different topics for proposal writing. He also answers a lot of questions from our students in our certification program. So uh, that piece is going to be reserved for our program. And of course, you're welcome to uh, check it out. You can go to govclose.com. But just this piece right here, if you use this takeaway, what he went over, you are going to improve your proposal win rates. You're going to improve the product you're delivering to the government. They're going to, they're going to think you know what you're doing in a way that is going to separate you from some of your competition. Hopefully, you found this useful and please, guys, subscribe to this channel, right? Where we're growing, we're God, almost 10 times the size that we were just three or four months ago. So your subscription to the YouTube channel helps, comments help, sharing the videos helps. And hey, head on over to govclose.com if you want to join our small but growing army of certified government contracting advisors and consultants that are helping companies all over the country sell to the U.S. government. And if you are a company and you're looking for someone, that can do this type of work for you, uh, reach out to us. We can hook you up with one of our certified students for things like business development, lead generation, proposal writing. Uh, There's a a long list of things that they do to include uh, helping you when you're on contract and solving some of your GovCon names. So thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you next time.